So the engine is running a, a, a MoTeC ECU, which is an Australian company that makes ECUs for racing applications. And uh, this is the ECU sitting right in here. And it's really actually a cool system because it's so configurable. Uh, you can set all kinds of different sensors and parameters and um, adjust all sorts of different things. And we're one of the first uh, people to be using it for a diesel application. Uh, although now we've had it for a couple of years. Sorry, a bit of aircraft noise around here at the airport. Uh, anyway, so we've had that ECU for a couple of years and so I've had time to learn it all um, and how it all works. And, you know, I did uh, all the wiring and stuff on this and set up all the sensors and I know how it all operates and I know en enough with the ECU in order to be able to do some, you know, adjustments and things uh, to it and, and uh, monitor it and just see how things are running. So that's kind of neat having that. Uh, and it has a ton of information for logging. And if you look back through some of the older videos, you'll see how much uh, logging information that you see coming off of that and also all the different gauges that you can watch in real time. And uh, one of the advantages of it is you can actually re um, look at it remotely. So I can actually have the aircraft running and up in the air and be monitoring the engine on the ground. Uh, which is a pretty neat uh, system. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much most of the engine there. Um, I think that I can cover for right now. If I think of anything else, I'll add it in a little bit later. Okay, so to go over some more of the parts of the airplane, uh, I wanted to show you uh, things on the wings out here. So um, these are the ailerons here. Yeah, if you can see that, yeah, there's ailerons sitting there. and. Uh, as you can see, they're, they're pretty big. They're a bit bigger than they, you know, than they, they needed to be. But I wanted to have, uh, you know, good uh, performance from uh, the aircraft, you know, in terms of handling. And then the winglets up there with the rudders on them, they're actually, uh, I think it's about 11 8 or 11 foot 10 is how tall they are. Ended up being a little bit taller. And if you look back again through our older videos, you'll see we actually had to increase the size of those because we had a problem with. Um, it, Dutch roll with the quarter scale model that we built and flew. Uh, and then back over here, uh, as with the engine, the cowling and the intake scoop is all sitting over here, so I'll show you that. So there's the intake scoop that sits on the top there, and that has a, a system here with a linear actuator, so it uh, can be adjusted so, so you can open it up and down, so it'll kind of lift up and down like this um, to allow a little bit more air in there if you need to have that. And also the cowling uh, underneath has a same type of setup with a, uh, a little cowl vent that opens and closes. So here's the pieces of the cowling. That's the uh, left hand side upper. And then there's the right hand side upper. And then over there is uh, the lower part and there's the cowling door. So obviously that's upside down right now. There's the cowling door and, and that will open up again with an actuator. And it's just right now it's just manually controlled from in the cabin and that'll allow more air uh, to circulate around through the engine. And yeah, moving back on to uh, the landing gear. So the reason why I chose uh, this style of landing gear here is it's fairly uh, rigid construction there. The legs are solid um, aluminum and they're made by uh, Grove. And then the mechanism for attracting them is all you know, custom designed and, and built and welded together. And then uh, we've got Behringer uh, wheels and brakes on there. And then uh, you see those brakes are like double caliper. So they're designed for, you know, really good stopping ability. Um, the aircraft maximum gross weight is going to be somewhere between sort of 36 and 3,800. May end up uh, increasing it more depending on how much the power of the engine uh, ends up being when we're done. Uh, and I chose these larger uh, tires as well, a little bit larger than they needed to be because I wanted to have the ability to possibly land this on takeoff from grass as well. And same with the nose wheel over there. It's a, uh, a five, sorry, 15 by 6, six uh, tire, so a little bit uh, wider and bigger than it needs to be. But again, uh, you know, if you're able, if it's able to fly off of grass, then that'll be um, better for it. So, and then, of course, when the gear retracts, it comes forward up in here into this nose compartment, and then the doors um, are basically pulled close, um, you know, behind it. And I've got the two uh, landing and taxi lights there on the uh, fork. So you only have uh, um, lights when the gear is down, and that's, again, just for this prototype right now. The reason why I didn't put lights anywhere else is because um, if I put them on the front here, um, with a, a lens on them, a lot of the light would have just been reflected back in because of the angle of the lens. 
and I didn't want to put any out on the wings here because they would be in your peripheral vision. So for now, that's all I have is the the uh, lights on the on the nose gear, and then out on the uh, wings here, I have these uh, position lights. So they're you know red and green for your port and starboard, and then they have a strobe built in, and then they also have a white on the rear there, and they're all LED, and they're pretty bright. So really, they're trying to keep things simple, so it's not like a ton of different lights and things on the aircraft. Um, just again, to, to make it you know, a simpler design in the end. So uh, yeah, let, let me uh, open it up and I'll show you a little bit what's going on on the inside. So the doors are fairly heavy right now because of the pressurization. There's a ton of locks and stuff on them. I'm actually looking at doing a redesign for uh, you know when this aircraft possibly goes into production. Uh, but right now they have a handle on here. Once you've opened up that handle, all you have to do is pull on it a little bit and they have a gas strut which opens them up and holds them open. So uh, there you can see uh, inside the cabin and I'll probably have to get some more lighting in there to show you what's going on here in a second. Uh, but yeah, let me come back and I'll show you all that in a little bit. Okay, so this is the cabin and, and uh, hopefully the first thing you'll notice is it's actually fairly wide in here. So that was kind of the goal um, compared to other aircraft. The, the shoulder width here sort of, you know, from where this uh, sort of seat comes next to the inside of the window and to, to the other side there is about 62 inches. Uh, so it's quite a lot wider than most other aircraft out there. Probably all other aircraft are this size. And I've tried to keep things uh, fairly simple with the panel as well. So uh, right now, the way this is configured is I have two of these Garmin G3X uh, units in here, uh, one on either side, and then a little backup um, G5 unit. And then in the center there, a Garmin uh, GTN 750 uh, for navigation. And then under that, that's the air conditioning uh, control unit there, and it has a climate control, so you can just set the temperature and a couple of air conditioning vents, one on either side here, and then there's two coming out the back of the center console just behind here for the back seaters. Um, before I get sort of too much into the avionics here, uh, I wanted to show you a couple of the different little features I have in here. So one of the things I did design in here was these cantilever seat mounts in here. So you've got like free room in under here to put in, you know, things long items so say if you're going skiing or something like that you could put your skis in under here and you can see it goes all the way back and the, the rear seat mounts a cantilever as well of course I don't have the rear seats in there right now because they're just in the way for finishing off everything so because there's still things that I needed to do up in the back there where the gear compartment is um, so you yeah, know those seat designs are really they're really strong they don't move at all um, and uh, you know just allow you to have more room for baggage and stuff there and then the center console, as you can see, is fairly wide. And in there I have it, so you can open that up. I lose my light there. Uh, yeah, you can open that up. And you see I have a couple of different things in there, stored in there, there's some switches and stuff in there as well. And again, just sort of for the prototype mainly, and we'll see how things work out uh, for production. And then I have uh, dual throttle controls in here, and dual mainly, you know, they're just fully connected. And there, that's a fly-by-wire system that hooks up to the MoTeC ECU. And the reason I did two like that was because the cabin's so wide, it would have been really sort of weird to have a center one there um, that both people would have to reach further across to. So, you know, either pilot has their own one. And then they have a little uh, switch on the back there for the takeoff go-around button, which hooks into the avionics. And then in the center there, I uh, have some LEDs there which indicate the gear position, uh, whether it's locked up or locked down. And then here's the governor controller, so you can adjust the uh, RPM on the engine there, basically adjusting the pitch of the prop uh, using that controller. And then this is the gear um, up and down lever here, and you actually have to pull that out before it will change position. So it's not really uh, a worry, at least not on the prototype, about it accidentally being moved. And you can't retract the gear anyway until you get to 85 knots because I've got a pressure sensor that reads through the pitot tube so not until you get up to 85 knots will the gear go up anyway um, and you can put it down at any speed and then uh, back on the panel there we also have the autopilot uh, control head up in here just in a nice uh, easy to access spot and then these two little pads that i have here these are these fix hl pads and the purpose of those is to just uh, stick a tablet on here 
So I have an iPad uh, for using um, with uh, ForeFlight uh, or the Garmin Pilot avionics, depending on which one that you want to use. And I have another one uh, that's going to be on there as well. That's a Windows tablet that's going to show up all the MoTeC uh, software. And so there you can see all the engine parameters on that and have full control over the engine from there. So it's pretty actually simple in terms of engine controls. Here you have the all your display is going to be in here, and your throttles in here. And then on the overhead here we have uh, your switches, which control the various different um, systems on the aircraft. So I'll go through them here. You have your main avionics switch here, uh, which just basically turns on uh, you know, the rest of the avionics there. And then a boost pump. So that's running the uh, fuel pressure over to the engine. And there's your starter, so you just press that in to start the engine and to, to kill the engine you press it on the other side. And then uh, door seals, that's actually for the pressurization system. I've actually got that wired to just sort of manually override and turn on the pressurization system. And then uh, pitot uh, heat, which heats up the pitot tube on the outside there. And then I've got your taxi and uh, landing lights here, the ones that I showed you on the nose gear. And then your nav lights, the red and green ones, port and starboard, on the wingtips. And then your strobes, again, on the wingtips. And then there's, here's your air scoop, uh, open and close, and that's one switch that basically works both the scoop and also the, uh, the cowling vent underneath. And then over here we have a, a fuel, another fuel pump one, and that's for the heating system, for heating the fuel through that intercooler. And then over here is your avionic standby battery. So um, that's the backup battery system that I have installed. Uh, so if everything sort of goes and your battery dies, you just turn that on and you, you're sort of manually switching to backup battery. Although the backup battery does kick in by itself anyway if the main battery gets too low. And then on the overhead here, we have uh, some lights. And then in the back there, I don't know if you can see those, but there's two more. So two here for the front seaters and two for the back seaters. And they can be changed to red or white. Uh, and they're just sort of touch controls and you can, you know, position them around however you want to move them to where, where you want to point them. And then the uh, parachute system, which I didn't actually show you in the uh, compartment. I'll go back in a second and show you that. But that's the, the handle there that you pull to activate the uh, airframe parachute. And uh, on either side of that, you've got the seat belts here for the front seats. They come off the ceiling there and they run back to the inertial wheels in the back there. You can see that. And then that other mounting point there, that's for the rear seat belts as well. Again, just two right now uh, for the rear seats. And so the seats that I end up getting here uh, are some sort of aftermarket racing ones. It's a new company called Braum, and as you can see, B R A U M. Um, and actually super comfortable and uh, one of the advantages of them is uh, you know they slide back and forth so six inches so someone who's a bit uh, taller can uh, move the seat back and the way I designed the uh, the seat mounts um, was on an angle so when you slide the seat back it actually goes further down and you know that's a pretty common design to do that but uh, you know just doing that makes it so a taller person will naturally put the seat further back and they'll naturally be sitting lower down. And the seats also recline and I'll show you here if I can do it with one hand. They recline, actually I think it goes further than that. <laughs> Let me see if I can go it all the way home. Yeah, that's all the way back. So you can actually take, it's like a dentist chair. You can actually take a nap so that was part two of this series. Tune in again next week and I'll have part three for you. Thanks for watching.